We also have results from Compass Group, and the world's biggest catering company has had a good start to the year. It's reported a profit of nearly 400 million pounds. That's beat analyst estimates. Well, they were expecting earnings of just over 350 million pounds. Well, Compass maintains its forecast for the rest of the year. Now, it also turned to the emerging markets and new areas such as cleaning and laundry to help get its business back on track. And the man driving those changes is the CEO, Richard Cousins. He joins me now from the London Stock Exchange. Thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning. In terms of what you see for the future, what is your biggest challenge? We have inflation rising across the world. We also have austerity measures, and I imagine a lot of your customers cutting down on how much they're willing to spend on food. How do you balance the two? Well, overall, we're seeing really good uh, revenue growth, as you described in your introduction. The inflationary pressures that we're facing are real, but we had a similar situation three or four years ago, and we're confident that we can manage it. What we're seeing from our consumers is, is fairly uh, healthy levels of expenditure, up from uh, the trough of the recession 12, 18 months ago. So we're, we're confident that we can manage the business going forward in a very positive way. But Richard Cousins, how do you actually manage it? it? Does it mean cost cutting? Does it mean actually providing cheaper food? And in terms of the difference between the private and the public sector, where do you see you hurting most? Yeah, I mean, the quality of the food is number one. It always, we always have to do the highest possible quality for our consumers. So what we seek to do is to purchase more efficiently, to plan our menus in a more intelligent way, such that if one commodity goes up by 5% and another one goes up by 2%, it's fairly obvious what we're going to do. So that's the key. In terms of what we're seeing in, in private and public, not a huge difference, really. Uh, our consumers are cautious, but we're seeing good growth in outsourcing and a rebalancing of our business, really, as we see ongoing strong growth in North America and particularly uh, a swing towards the emerging markets. But are you actually able, able to pass on these food price inflation onto your customers? Yes, we are. I mean, the first job is we have to mitigate those costs. It's essential that we can demonstrate to our clients that we are driving efficiencies very hard. And then the residue we pass on with price increases. Now, today you've also announced that uh, you're uh, buying the 50% remaining of a turkey business. Any more acquisition plans? I know you have been on the acquisitive trail over the last couple of years. Yeah, well, over the first seven and a half months of our financial year, we spent £300 million on acquisitions, the small to medium in, uh, type, and we're very encouraged by the pipeline that we see going forward. Turkey is a, a really exciting business for us, a big double-digit growth, and we think that's set fair to continue for many years. But do you, are you willing to spend more on acquisitions? Do you have any other targets in mind? And if you do, how much money have you set aside for that? Well, our cash flow is very strong, and that gives us the opportunity both to increase the dividend, which we did by 30% a day, and to carefully increase our M&A spend. So we will be doing that. We don't have a, a fixed budget. So much depends upon what comes along. But we are looking at all of our key countries to explore opportunities in both food and support services. And, and what looks more attractive? at the moment? Are you looking at valuations? What kind of a company would you be looking to buy in terms of size and scope? Well, we don't rule out a large deal, but our strong preference is for the small to medium, so that's, say, $50 million would probably be average. And over the last couple of years, we've done deals of that type in Canada, US, Brazil, France, UK, Turkey, Australia. So I think that global spread uh, on both food and support services will continue. Now, talk to me a little bit about your clients. What sectors are, seem more healthy? Who is spending more? Sorry, can you say the question again? In terms of your clients, who is spending more? If, if you look at the different sectors that need your facilities, is there anyone that seems more healthy than others? Well, once again, we've got a nicely uh, balanced business. We've got big positions in biggest business and industry, healthcare, education, sports and leather, uh, sports and leisure. So I think we're seeing fairly positive trends across all sectors. All right, Richard Cousins, thank you so much for joining us today.